I just had to recode my entire voxel engine from scratch and the reason might surprise you. Or probably not. The reason is because I was stupid as usual. So I've been working on this voxel engine for a few months now and it was going pretty well. I had a few things planned for this video such as textures, better digging, optimization and basic physics. But you know me, I always gotta break everything. So I got started by adding the textures and I think it looked pretty good. I even had my buddy Pig Boss make some textures for me, so I had a few options. Thank you Mr. Pig. I then improved the digging so instead of having a bunch of grass and dirt in the ground, you now get dirt right under the grass and after digging a few cubes you get stone. That makes a lot more sense than before. Now this is when things went wrong. I tried to optimize the world loading and unloading by sending it to another thread and using multi-threading. But nope, it didn't make it any better. I then tried to start the physics system by detecting groups of cubes that didn't touch the ground to make them fall. But for that I had to modify my destruction code and that completely broke it. At this moment, I realized my mistake. In the first video, when I started the engine, I mentioned how a few people made their engines in Rust and using Vulkan. But I didn't know anything about it so I just used C++ and OpenGL thinking it was pretty much the same thing. Well it turns out that people didn't choose those for fun. It seems that what I chose is not really good for voxel engines. Because each part of the engine uses common things like chunks and cube data, they cannot run at the same time very well so multi-threading is not very optimal. Using Rust helps make that a little bit better. As much as I didn't want to, I decided to recode my whole engine in Rust and Vulkan. Should be easy enough. I gotta admit I had absolutely no idea what I was doing for most of this recoding process. I expected that it would be very similar but it was actually very different. So I had to binge watch a lot of Rust tutorials. Thankfully Let's Get Rusty was there to save me, really good stuff. So once I knew the basics of Rust I only had to set up and learn Vulkan. The setup was really easy, I just had to add the Vulkan dependencies, install CMake, install Ninja? Oh my god, it's Ninja from Fortnite. Add some stuff to the Windows path, add some other dependencies, download the examples with the basic setup, compile everything, and after all that I had... a triangle. I'm starting to regret this a little bit now. I loaded up different examples from the GitHub and tried to understand their code by asking an AI to explain it and asking questions to see if I got it right. Apparently my experience with C++ and OpenGL are pretty useful because I understood pretty quickly. Yippee! So then I moved on to trying to modify the examples to solidify my understanding. After a lot of messing around and bombarding the AI with some questions, I understood most of what was going on. That's a pretty good start but I didn't want to make the same mistake of starting wrong and having to redo everything again. Also, when I started my engine the first time, I did it for fun and to learn new things but now I actually want to do something good and build a game on it. So this time I decided to research how other people approach voxels to use the best tools I can. At this moment I stumbled upon someone named Tantan that has been through the same hell I have and even more. I watched that video explaining how Tantan had to recode his project 3 times and it did make me feel a little bit better about myself. But I also saw it as a sign. He seems like a god of rust and he decided to use an engine because making it from scratch in rust was too hard. And my rust level in comparison is uh, pretty close but not quite there yet, you know? So for me to think I could make my engine from scratch in rust while he didn't is kinda really dumb. So I decided to copy him and use a mini engine called Bevy. That will take care of most of the render black magic stuff that I don't want to mess with and let me focus on the voxel specific stuff. Nice. It even does things I had on my to-do list that scared me because I had no idea how to do it like transparency. So I messed around with the examples given by the engine and ended up with the instancing example, kind of like I had earlier, because that's the base of the way I approach voxels. Then I was ready to start remaking my engine. The first step is obviously to get the voxels to render in the world. I tried GPU instancing squares like I did in my previous engine, 
with 1 million squares and it was not a problem at all. Using 2.25 million squares it was lagging a lot though. That is to be expected because even with GPU instancing, the engine still has to draw each cube one after the other and that is pretty slow. At some point during my research I found out about voxel machination? Meshization? Meshes... Turning voxels into meshes, okay? As it sounds, instead of rendering all of the squares individually, you group them up into one mesh and render that. I tested it out by rendering a plane subdivided 3000 times, meaning the equivalent of 9 million squares and it was not lagging at all. I had to go up to over 18 million squares for it to lag like the 2.25 million squares did before. Using that means I'll have to code big parts of my engine differently this time, but I think it will be worth it. I mean anyway, I'm already recoding it so might as well do that now. I coded a system that would make a mesh from a bunch of squares and started testing it. This also means that I get to use Bevy's materials which gives me lighting and shadows, as well as a few other things. Yay! With 1 million squares it was perfectly smooth, 2.25 million squares, smooth. Even 4 million squares is smooth, zero lag. That's actually so good, twice the amount I had before and with lighting this time and it lags less than before. Then I started working on making it an actual landscape, kinda like I had in my previous engine. But since I found a cool optimization trick, I might as well increase the resolution, right? I started by spawning the top faces of cubes. Nice, that's pretty good. Then I added the sides. Uh, <laughs> whoops! Yeah, okay, so the sides looking pretty nice now. But my landscape is not supposed to be shiny like a bald head, so I had to change the lighting settings, and here we go, looking pretty nice. Then I just generated further and added colors for grass, stone and snow. The lighting was still pretty bad though, but I was able to fix it easily using Bevy. I gotta say, using Bevy for the shadows was a lot easier than coding it myself in OpenGL. <laughs> in the part 2 of the original engine, I made the world load and unload as you move and destruction. So I started making that again. The loading was actually easy to make but the lag spike on load is insane. I could fix it by reducing the chunk size, but that would give me such a small render distance it's actually crazy. I spent days trying to optimize it and I could not find why it was lagging. Only to realize days later that it was just because of the debug mode and using release mode it was completely smooth. Damn. After loading, I added unloading, which was pretty easy. I just have to delete the mesh when they're too far away. Next was the destruction. I used the same logic to find the cube I was aiming at and destroy it. Destroying a radius around it was pretty easy too. But if I learned anything from playing Minecraft, it's that the void under the map is bad. I tried filling the hole, but uh, <laughs> I tried, okay? After a bit of work, I had something decent. There were still some holes, but overall it was pretty good. I thought I was pretty close to done. <laughs> How wrong I was. There were always some damn bugs and every time I fixed one, it created a new one. I think this made me start to hate game dev a little bit. But over a week of painful work later, I had something almost perfect. Almost. Because yes, even after over a week of work, there were still some bugs. At least now it's a lot more optimized than before and it also allows me to create huge holes much faster than my previous engine. So I'll take it as a win. Part 3 was all about the skybox, fog and shadows. Thankfully the shadows are already done by Bevy, so I added a skybox and a fog. It looks pretty cool but uh, my world is looking kinda weird. I didn't get why that was happening so I asked on the Bevy discord and a kind person told me why and also suggested another way to do the fog to prevent this. And it actually worked. So thank you very much. I ended up with a pretty nice looking thing that is way more optimized than before. But when I destroy big holes fast there's still lag. Remember how I recoded mainly to allow better multi-threaded destruction than C++ was allowing me? Yeah well it's finally time to do it. Okay, so this is actually kind of embarrassing. I didn't manage to make the multi-threaded destruction. <laughs> Ooh, you 
suck! But it's okay, okay, it's fast enough for now, I'll figure it out later. Instead, I added particles on destroy, added back textures like I did in the start of this vid with my old engine, and made it dirt under where you dig. And yeah, the result is pretty similar to what I had before, but now it is way more optimized in both world loading, rendering, and destruction. It also should allow me to do more things more easily in the future. Anyway, thanks for watching and adios.